This lecture is about adverse effects of physical inactivity. Physical activity induces cardiovascular fitness, increases muscle mass, and healthy blood glucose regulation while reducing visceral fat, triglycerides, and low density lipoproteins. Sedentary lifestyle, so inactivity, promotes adipose tissue accumulation that generates systemic inflammation and oxidative damage. Exercise, however, demands commitment, time, energy, stamina, and persistence. Exercise is not concerned about your time restraints, so career research is the responsibilities of movement restriction due to neuropathic pain or uh, chronic pain or individual choices. Now, over a billion of individuals are obese globally. Effects of exercise on an unhealthy body, basically exercise, fitness, and weight loss, blood flow, and energy. So, glucose energy, hyperglycemia, testosterone decrease, and stress eating. This is what the exercise does. So the good part is that you have fitness and weight loss. However, there is an increase in inflammatory cytokines like uh, um, interleukin-6 and hyperglycemia. And also there is a decrease of testosterone and an increase of cortisol with exercise. And again, it's very important, but it has its downside. Excess body weight promotes insulin resistance, increases blood glucose, diabetic nephropathy, and neuropathy, actually, and the, the non-alcoholic fatty liver. Now, obesity plus insulin resistance creates the type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease kills about a million individuals yearly. Diabetes, hypertension are associated with COVID-19 mortality rates and very high mortality rates of COVID-19. So it's not a good thing. Basically, it creates a lot of problems. Imbalance between intrahepatic triglycerides production and uh, export creates uh, a visceral fat, we call it VAT. Uh, that creates more triglycerides, lipotoxicity, inflammation, non alcoholic steatosis, which is the fatty liver, and uh, basically cirrhosis in the end. And this is the difference between uh, healthy liver. And this is the fatty liver here, it's fatty liver. You can see how basically it's completely damaged. Now, COVID-19, um, uh, the uh, VAT, which is the visceral post issue, increases the chances of you getting COVID-19 and also staying in the uh, medical ward much longer because the COVID-19 has an affinity for fat cells, for AC2 receptors in the fat cells. Muscle, however, has the least AC2 receptors. So basically, the fat has the most and the muscle has the least. So what do you want to do? You want to exchange fat with muscle. And that's going to be an additional protection. So even if you do get COVID-19, you're not going to be overwhelmed by it. Now, 16 minutes of low-level ther laser therapy uh, combined with one hour of aerobic uh, exercise reported visceral fat reduction, however, no differences in BMI. Now, a follow-up study actually found no visceral fat reduction by the same investigators. Uh, now, randomized placebo control data demonstrates some modest reduction of visceral fat at post issue and fat liver improvement followed eight weeks of aerobic exercise. However, again, no differences in BMI. But exercise is worse. It's just that it takes a very long time and it requires a very substantial effort. This is the scientific research of the uh, articles that I have uh, published, uh, they're all mostly in 2020 the ones that we see here. 
and the, uh, the more articles from in the journal from the Sentinels and the Scientific on uh, a lot of them on COVID-19, some of them on diabetes, and um, basically describes that uh, propensity of COVID-19 for uh, fat cells and how it uh, kind of does not affect the uh, muscle cells as much. And this is uh, the uh, design of our study. Basically, we did a blood test uh, before and after D3. We looked at CRP, which is inflammatory hormone. We looked at fasting and PP insulin in pre-diabetics and fasting and PP uh, glucose in diabetics. And then we also, uh, 11 subjects had a sonogram uh, before the first treatment. And uh, then we basically tested everybody after 20 treatments. This is uh, people that all of them had uh, some kind of a medical disorder. And uh, we use this effortless simulated exercise uh, technology that uh, has a uh, basically eight seconds four bite contraction. And I can show you what this looks like. We're gonna observe now the contraction opening up, opening slowly, 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 slowly. The way you sort of lift up weights very, very slowly. And this is how basically it starts uh, you know, utilizing a lot of fat, both subcutaneous and viscera, to build the muscle. This is uh, some of our results. Uh, there was uh, several studies involved in this, and we found a BMI decrease of 23.46%. Uh, fat, overall fat was minus 23.8. Mean visceral fat decrease was minus 29.3 and mean skeletal muscle increase was 41.6. Again, different subject had different responses. Uh, BMI decrease, uh, again, is the same thing. This is a decrease, minus 47%. Actually, this is a different study, that follow-up study that we did, and again, overall fat was 23.8, and this fat was much higher than the previous study. And uh, um, the muscle mass was about the same. 41.9. This is uh, the results on uh, blood glucose and PP, postprandial post, uh, glucose, and uh, the results on uh, fat liver as well. There were 11 subjects that uh, uh, this is uh, the diabetics, and uh, here is all the pre diabetics and the results. You can see the uh, insulin decrease was uh, 41.8. Um, and uh, no, I'm sorry, it was my 54.52, and uh, the uh, insulin decrease of uh, uh, PP was uh, minus 44.7. Uh, and uh, here um, is uh, the pre and post treatment results on fatty liver and sonography reports. And uh, you can see fatty liver previously, these are all diabetic patients and no fatty liver after the 20 treatments. And they did 20 treatments because uh, pre-diabetics and diabetics are far more resistant to losing weight. Uh, triglycerides uh, was a minus 22.88% uh, decrease, and average uh, decrease increase of uh, the high-density lipoprotein was 30.34 which is something that you want. You want the uh, VLDL and uh, triglycerides to increase, and you want the HDL to increase. And uh, you want the cholesterol to increase. And again, uh, FRITI-3 was a significant increase of 40.78. And the CRP, that is, uh, these studies were the only ones that looked at the CRP, uh, the C-reactive protein, which basically is the best model for inflammation, and we find a significant decrease of 37.88%. Now, this is the table of the statistical results, and you can see um, there was a significant uh, uh, significance in all variables, uh, both blood glucose, blood um, uh, insulin fasting, and insulin BP, triglycerides, um, and um, also uh, upper abdominal reduction, CM was again 965, about the same as that we found in previous studies. Um, this was, was 10.32, uh, lower reduction was 11.5. Skeletal muscle mass, um, 
was again very significant. Uh, uh, HDL was significant, and um, uh, this is again some of the uh, before and after results. Uh, the subject uh, uh, allow us to use the uh, pictures. Um, this is after f uh, 15 treatments. Uh, again, after 15 treatments, before and after the results, and uh, that's also after 15 treatments. This is from a different clinic. Other studies performed with the same technology uh, looked at the review of COVID 19 associated factors, uh, CRP, creatinine, bilirubin, VLDL, triglycerides, cortisol, and function, and again found very significant results. That's uh, the uh, Blood test results on creatinine and bilirubin. These are all associated. These are all markers of COVID-19, as a matter of fact. And again, it's uh, uh, we looked at diabetics and pre-diabetics, and uh, the uh, uh, the results on uh, creatinine. There was a deduction of of uh, 19.67, and bilirubin was 69.23. CRP, again, a very high decrease in CRP of uh, minus 36.87. And cortisol decreased quite significantly in this study at minus 17.47%. Blood tests that uh, also looked at VLDL triglycerides, and uh, we found a VLDL decrease of minus 8.13 and triglycerides at minus 14.9%. Uh, um, there's this uh, table of all the statistical significance of this particular study, VLDL triglycerides, 33, uh, bilirubin, creatinine, CLP, cortisol, HDL, visceral articles, tissue, BMI, and uh, measurements in umbilicals. There were all variables where significantly, very significantly, um, as a, a, a very, very statistically significant. This is again our uh, clinical board, and that uh, they are basically involved in different of our studies. There's a lot more clinics that are participating right now in uh, research. I don't have the doctors for them. And with this, I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention. And if you do have any questions, I'll be happy to respond to you right away if you email me at science at Thank you.